Hi, so welcome uh, to part two of Coffee with the Chairman. And uh, right now we have a wonderful opportunity to be speaking with a newly elected uh, State Senator Karina Villa, who I'm so excited that she's here. Uh, so welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chairwoman. This is amazing. It's, a, it's so exciting to just be able to be here and talk to everyone about some of the work that uh, we've been doing. We have many common passions, so I'm looking forward to the conversation. So tell me a little bit about how it feels, first of all, to be in Springfield uh, with the elite senators. Oh my goodness. I always like to say it's the other chamber because remember, I came from the house and I have a lot of friends over there. So once you start saying the upper chamber, uh, some of my other friends might get upset. So, uh, But it is really wonderful. It's been great to be over there. As you know, the path to um, getting here was a long and hard one that started many, many years ago. I wasn't the first one to try, but you know, it took a long time to get us to, to be able to, to the seat. And so I'm making every minute count. Right now, our communities are struggling, are suffering, everything with from small businesses to the workers at the manufacturing plants. Um, they need us a voice. So being in Springfield at this time is so critical, and it's it's really an honor to be serving in this capacity. Oh, I, I, I agree. And as you know, one of the very first things that we worked very hard towards was opening up the CaneVax hub. And right now, we are able to serve 3,000 people a day, and that as long as we get additional vaccines, we can start increasing that. Uh, and what really was a blessing, and I thank, thank the state of Illinois and the Illinois Department of Public Health, is granting us access to the Illinois National Guard, because with that as a mass Illinois mass vaccination site. We have now got additional supports through the National Guard, through the vaccinators that they bring. Those are the people who actually will put the shot in your arm, as well as the precious vaccine, so that we can get additional additional vaccines every week, not only for the people of Kane County, but everybody in Illinois. So that's what that site is opened up for to serve. But I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the factories. We have 35,000 people in Kane County who are employed by our manufacturing facilities. So I know you have been a strong advocate for them. So can we talk a little bit about, about your work and what you have done to get these very important and very critical people safe and at work? Absolutely. So when the pandemic started, I immediately started receiving phone calls from people who were very concerned because the message was stay home. Stay home if you can. Don't go out. Uh, if you can work remotely, work remotely. And then a certain population was told, but you must go to work. And those workers were the essential workers. And some of those essential workers were those that we think about on a daily basis. We think about our uh, public safety officers. We think about our fire uh, fighters. We think about our doctors and nurses and healthcare providers. But also, the manufacturing workers were deemed essential. So they were also uh, told that they had to go to work. Many of these factories did the right thing. They got the PPE. They put in uh, dividers between people. They, they increased uh, social distancing. Uh, they had doors where folks came in and doors where they went out. They took temperatures. They did the right thing by their employees. Other manufacturing companies did not. Um, they did not. And so I got those phone calls from the family members of these folks who were fearful for their lives fearful for their jobs, fearful for what was to come if they decided to say, I won't go to work because you're not protecting me, or if uh, they were to say, I, I don't feel well, um, how are they gonna pay the bills? So I got firsthand, uh, a firsthand perspective of all of that with all of these conversations. We then passed um, protection uh, legislation for the workers, for the essential workers, mm -hmm. making sure that it then obligated the factories to take care of their employees during COVID. Now, when the vaccine came out, to me it was essential workers. They were the first, they were the front line 
they were the ones that were impacted the most. Um, along with our seniors, the factory and warehouse workers were the ones um, who died at greater numbers. And so, to me, it was and now they and they couldn't the afford vaccine. to stay home. They, that, can't. they couldn't afford to stay home. That's right. And now we have the vaccine. So now it's how do we get the vaccine to the workers? Let's partner with as many folks as possible and let's get these vaccines where they need to be. And as you know, Suncast um, here in King County has vaccinated. We had an event along with Representative Maura Hirschauer and uh, Jewel Osco and the King County Health Department, and we went and vaccinated the folks from Suncast at their place of How work. How many employees were Over vaccinated? 600 employees. That's and what I was told, this is the great part about it. That what at first, the employees didn't have to register. They didn't have to go through any phone calls. or It was right there at work. Mm -hmm. And literally, it, they were going through the line and saying, OK, it's your turn. Get in line. It's your turn. Get in line. Of course, people could refuse. But what the owners of Suncast said was, because it's here, and people are watching their friends say, okay, I'll get it. More folks jumped in and said, okay, maybe Fantastic. people who would have said, no, I'm not gonna do it. Then we're like, well, it's here. My friends are doing it. Let's go ahead and do it. So it, it was a really successful event. So I would like to challenge you with that, uh, is that as they get their second doses, that you also encourage Suncast and Walgreens to allow family members to come as well mm -hmm. to provide that vaccine for husbands, wives, uh, children who would be eligible after the age of um, April 12th, so if you're 16 and over, so that the whole family unit gets vaccinated. So that was something that we had talked to them about. And what the situation is, they, they didn't have space to bring the community into Suncast. We did ask them if they'd be willing to do that. So part of the space where they were doing the vaccine uh, setup and the, you know, the 15 minute afterwards that you have to sit and wait, mm -hmm. yes. that was actually right off of the, the factory floor. Um, so it's dangerous. You can't have Worse outsiders in. Absolutely. And so, but we, I, you know, I will talk to them and see how we can continue to partner to bring, to, for example, help their, the loved ones get registered for mm -hmm. um, the King County uh, uh, location. I think that th that the more people that are getting vaccinated, the less fear the community is going to fear feel, especially in the Latino community. As you know, many folks have been very fearful of getting vaccinated. So let's talk about that. How can we effectively, besides bringing it directly into the community, which King County is planning on doing, but you can have a site, mm -hmm. but you have many homes miles around that particular site. So how do we encourage people not to be afraid to come get the vaccine? What would be the best approach? I think that community leaders need to be at the forefront. We need to be seen saying, we got the vaccine, this is safe, um, you know, we welcome you here. Having, having folks out at that site who the community trusts and knows, I think those are really critical uh, pieces. But also key leaders within the community, uh, people in fellowship, right, and in, in, from the religious uh, sector, also uh, folks in education, you know, teachers, principals, these are people that uh, folks look to and trust in times of crisis. Those are the folks that we need to be there being our champions and saying, yes, you know, I, I did it. I took the vaccine for my family. We all decided to do it. It's safe. You can do this as well. Um, I think that word of mouth, it, it really uh, matters in the Latino community uh, from voices that we trust. Very good, very mm -hmm. good. And what can Kane County do to help out distribute the vaccines to make sure that the vaccines that we have are distributed and the message is accurate so that we can reach out to all of our communities. Yes, absolutely. I think multi-language, um, multicultural approach is really important, making sure that we have access in, in Spanish and in other languages as well. We have a growing Asian population yes, in do. King County, which is so wonderful. I agree. Um, and so making sure that we have things in, in uh, accessible in, in Spanish. One of the things that uh, many folks in the community have wondered about, 
in terms of the National Guard? Should we fear that? Should we go to this site? Is that going to be safe? Um, you know, will they take our information? Will they, will they use our information later on down the line? Do they ask for an ID? Do they ask uh, for my citizenship status in order to get vaccinated? And is there a cost? And is there a cost? Mm -hmm. So, no. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here, folks. <laughs> None of that at all. None of that at all. We want to make sure that you come. Obviously, you have to because we want to track to make sure that you've had the first vaccine and that you appropriately are registered for the second vaccine. But that's all we need to see. That's all we need to hear. All we need to see your address, um, but we don't need to see proof because right now the vaccination hub in Batavia is open to all Illinois residents. It's not just for Kane County. And as such, we just want to be able to track, because that's what's required, what city you live in. Uh, so that we know that people from Chicago are coming in or people from Will County are coming in so we can track that residency. But other than that, absolutely, that's it. And, that's there's, and there's no cost to it at all. And the Illinois National Guard are our finest, some of Illinois' finest, who have given up their, their time, their talents uh, to, to serve Illinois. Yes. Absolutely, and along with that, I'll also mention that the National Guard helped with the testing site in yes. uh, Aurora yes. over what, when that first testing site came out. And I know that there was fear associated with that, but then people saw like, oh, this is okay, this is safe. You know, they're not doing anything that makes me feel uncomfortable. So people then grew in trust. So I hope that the community grows in trust and, and still sees like, oh, it was the same group of folks who were helping us getting with our testing. Mm -hmm. It's the same group of folks who are gonna be helping us with getting the vaccine. And some of these are uh, young men and women uh, who are serving to earn money for college, uh, to d develop a skill, develop a trade. Um, and it's a way that they find that they would like to serve the United States as well as specifically the state of Illinois. So they really are our neighbors. Uh, there are brothers, there are sisters, uh, they are an amazing group of people uh, who are there. Uh, so I, it's something that I think that the community and our students should take great pride in. Yes, absolutely, I agree, I agree. I've actually talked to some folks who have been uh, working seven days a week on distributing the vaccine and uh, folks get teared up and say, this is the most important work of my lifetime. It is, yeah. it is, it is. Mm -hmm. So our goal uh, is we have about 534,000 people in Kane County. Uh, when the census is completed, probably it's gonna go over 540,000. Out of that, we'd like to get about 400 plus thousand people vaccinated. And once next year, when children are, hopefully will be able to get vaccinated, that'll be 500, and 40,000 people to get vaccinated. And right now we have about 65,000 people who have been fully vaccinated. So. All right, <laughs> let's roll up our sleeves. <laughs> let's, let's get this done. I th it's exciting. It's exciting to hear uh, when, when the number is, is low, it's like, it feels like a daunting task, but it's important to say the number because then when you hit a hundred thousand, it's like, oh my gosh. And then, you know, you keep meeting those benchmarks and it's important to celebrate that. So, and it's also important to, to compare where we're at to where we need to be. Um, because that then lets those of us who are in Springfield and the federal government know we need this many more vaccines. This oh. is our goal. We need more vaccines. And that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so one of the things uh, for all of our listeners is that we have the staff and the capability to distribute more vaccine. And I, we've gotten phone calls. We have people who have constantly been challenged of not being able to register for the vaccine and the frustrations that ensue because of that. Um, I, first of all, I want to thank you for wanting to get the vaccine and for working so hard to try to get registered. But the more vaccines we have, the bigger our bandwidth becomes and the more vaccines we can distribute out to our communities. 
So, you can talk to me, but this beautiful woman sitting next to me is the one you really want to talk to, uh, to make sure that she is a strong advocate for, for Kane County and for Illinois. Because you serve Kendall, you serve DuPage, right. and Kane. Yes, and a little hair of Cook. A little hair of Cook, yes. yes. <laughs> That's right, and so it is, it's so important that we make sure that our communities are not forgotten about, and no. that we, um, folks out here also want to want to be vaccinated. I think that there has been a big push and a lot of uh, motive for getting the city uh, vaccinated. That's where the most amount of cases were. Mm -hmm. um, but but now, as more access to vaccine is here, we need to make sure that everyone is is getting uh, the vaccine. Everyone who who is willing and and, and able to get it. So just to, um, to talk about something different, but something I know you're very passionately interested in is education. Um, you were a former social worker, is that's that right. correct? Yes, um, that's right. At West Chicago Schools. Mm -hmm. I'm a former educator as well uh, and served on the St. Charles School Board. So it's a, it's a passion and an interest yes. that we both share. One of the things that I've heard coming down from the federal government mm -hmm. as a possible suggestion for uh, funding uh, support through the American Recovery Act is broadband. So can we just have a brief conversation about what you have seen with the, your school knowledge mm -hmm. about lack of access for broadband for our different communities? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and this is, uh, I was actually just on a call with the AERP this morning, and broad, broadband uh, access is something that's critical for our senior population mm -hmm. as well, right? With uh, the telehealth that is out there oh, yes. and available. Uh, many of our uh, low income seniors or seniors who have very limited resources don't have access to broadband. So then they, during the pandemic, weren't able to access telehealth. Um, it's interesting because the more I learn, the more I see how, how many similarities there are between children's needs and seniors', seniors needs. needs. Mm -hmm. it's, it's impressive to me how, how, what a big correlation there is between mm -hmm. those needs, right? Um, so, so out in, in the rural parts of my area, um, and even more rural parts of, of Illinois, you see children really struggling. Children, you hear about students uh, going to, uh, for example, the families going and parking outside of a, a, of a school to, to connect to their Wi-Fi and able, to be able to do their work. Or the public library. Or the public library, or you know, anywhere else in town that has any kind of Wi-Fi availability. And you can't expect a student to sit in the car for, for that many hours to do their work. I mean, that's, yeah. and, and then you think about for, after the pandemic, right? Which will be here one day, we will see the after the pandemic days. Mm -hmm. But when the students are at home wanting to do homework or wanting to you know, access resources online, I think this is a really important and critical conversation. It, it's a very important mm -hmm. conversation. And I know one that, uh, sitting here at King County, one that we want to support. Mm -hmm. uh, because going forward, this is going to be as critical as a phone line. Absolutely. It's gonna be one and the same. And, and in the pandemic, some of the things there were great things that came out of it, right? And one of those things was the telehealth. So we want to make sure that children who need to have access to telehealth in the future, uh, some of that might be for mental health services, which is another topic that you and I are very passionate about. Um, you know, if children need access to a, a psychiatrist or a therapist, um, or seniors need access to their doctors, to the same. That, or to therapists, right, that they're able to access that. And the only way that, that we can ensure that is, is making sure that there's um, a, a level of uh, connectivity that is um, equitable. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so I think that uh, you and I, um, as well as Mayor Irvin uh, and our small business owner, uh, Sal Daza with uh, Gun Barrel Coffee, are all in agreement that working with small businesses, hearing their voices, being able to support their needs so that they can continue to grow and prosper to serve the uh, communities. Uh, to allow our constituents to feel free that 
they can shed their masks, uh, feel that they can go to restaurants, go back to school, uh, enjoy families with great confidence, and being able to go forward, step proudly forward with Wi-Fi access is going to be something critical that we can all work on in the next few years. Absolutely. Absolutely. My parents are small business owners too, right here in King County. So uh, it's, the, the small business situation is one that's near and dear to my heart. And anything that I can do to help uh, bolster the voice um, of, of the small businesses, I will continue to do. Wonderful, wonderful. And with that, I'd like to uh, thank you. Uh, this has been a wonderful opportunity to, uh, to hear about all your great work. And uh, we certainly all wish you great success. Thank you so much. Yeah.